Hello there. Welcome to my campfire. My name is Serafine, the Midnight Bard, and I travel from place to place seeking the strange, the bizarre, and the unexplained. There are few things in life as uncomfortable as silence. Our modern world is one of constant light, of sound, and countless avenues for distraction and entertainment. Long gone are the days where people would embrace silence as a companion and give their thoughts room to bloom. Perhaps we are afraid of what we might find in silent meditation. Maybe. Or perhaps we are actively drowning the sounds of something far more terrifying than our thoughts. I once heard of a village haunted by the calls of something otherworldly. They say something unholy entered our village decades ago. There used to be a Taoist temple in my hometown. It sat on top of a tall hill. It was a small temple with only four Taoists living inside a priest and three acolytes. There was also a well not far from the temple, serving as the sole water source for the residents. And the youngest Taoist had to wake up before dawn every day to fetch water from that well. Unfortunately, the temple mysteriously burned down in the late 60s. Weeks before it burned down, the water guy started talking about how he heard faint wailing from down the well, and how something would tug at the fetcher rope whenever he was pulling up the bucket. The others didn't take him seriously. Then, on the morning of the last day, the poor guy got so scared that he refused to even approach the well. He said the wailing got louder and malicious, and he was afraid if he got too close the well would swallow him. This time, the others decided to go check it out. But when they got there, all they found was just a silent, mundane well. So they just fetched water and went back. The water guy was in the Hillfoot village later that day. Deeply unsettled, he betrayed his Taoist reticence and told the villagers about the well's paranormality. Getting everything out of his chest may have helped his mood, but it certainly didn't save his temple from doom. That night, fire befell the temple and licked everything clean. People looked for the Taoist bodies in the ruins the next day in order to bury them, but only found three. They suspected the water guy to be the one missing, for he was of a smaller frame. Fast forward 20 plus years. My family was living in that hillfoot village, and I would go play on that hill with the other kids. We were warned about the haunted dry well, <laughs> but as ghetto kids who didn't suffer much surveillance or discipline, we still ventured to the well occasionally to see if we could hear wailing coming out of it. One day, one of the kids accidentally dropped this school bag in the well. Fearing the wrath of his parents, he turned desperation into creativity by fashioning a jerry-rigged rope and hook and successfully retrieved his school bag from the well. He shouldn't have, though. Because, mere days later, charred palm prints and footprints started showing up in his house. On the floor the walls, or even the ceiling. Sometimes it was just a pair. Other times, there would be rows of them. The boy's family quickly moved away 
and the village seemingly returned to peace. I'm telling this story now because yesterday I found a pair of blackened palm prints on my bedroom floor, and as someone who once retrieved a school bag from that unholy well, I'm utterly disturbed. Thank you for tuning in to this week's story, Campfire Gang. As always, please remember to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Also, be sure to check out the author's links in the description to see more of their work or to contact them and tell them how much you enjoyed their story. Now until next time, remember, darkness welcomes the inquiring.